Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and here with episode number 303 of Ask Dave. We're going to do something today. We're going to find out if this choke ballon from MFJ makes any difference. This is a choke ballon. It's uh, got 50 ferrite beads wrapped around an 11 inch piece of coax that's inside of this right here. Now that isn't 11 inches long so uh, that means it's wrapped back on itself a little bit in there. Uh, it's enclosed in this schedule 40 plastic pipe so that it'll be very strong and we're going to try it two places. First the uh, uh, manual su suggests that we put this thing near the transmitter um, and normally you would put a choke ballon near the antenna so we'll try putting it there. The antenna we're going to use is the MFJ17754, uh, which is a 4020 trapped dipole. It's a little narrow band on 40 meters. It covers the entire 20 meter band. And what I'm going to look for is to see if this makes any difference in SWR. Um, uh, it should handle the signal strength and stuff like that okay. Uh, but ideally this would give us a better SWR because it would keep any the, the trap dipole made by uh, MFJ does not have a ballon in the center of it so we're going to add this ballon. I've got a little piece of uh, coax extension that we can use here for doing that. So let's uh, give this a try and see what happens. First let's put that 17754 antenna back up and we'll take some SWR measurements on it and note uh, various things about it. And then we'll put the ballon by the antenna and then we'll put the ballon by the radio and see if it makes any difference. Okay, let's look at results here. Um, I tried three different configurations. The first configuration was the antenna without the choke ballon. The second configuration was the antenna with the choke ballon just prior to the transceiver, actually just prior to my uh, MFJ uh, 259B. And the third configuration was with the ballon out at the antenna. Uh, as you can see in these pictures here, uh, it's hanging from uh, the antenna with with a short section of RG8U cable. And uh, in that configuration, it should keep uh, any kind of uh, uh, feed line radiation below that point from being a factor. We do see a tiny effect in the SWR results. But now remember that this antenna, uh, the feed line goes through a lightning arrestor that is connected to ground. So the shield is therefore connected to ground before it comes into the house. And I ran it through all the stuff that it goes through before it gets actually to the transceiver. And uh, so the antenna again that I used is the MFJ17754, which is a two band dipole, it's 40 and 20, and it's trapped. So it has fairly narrow bandwidth on 40 meters, but has full bandwidth on 20 meters. So let's take a look at the results using the overhead camera here. Let's look first at 40 meters. Now what I have in the chart is the 3 to 1 frequency, 2 to 1, these are SWRs, the best SWR, the 2 to 1 above there, and the 3 to 1 above there. So if we take it without the, uh, the MFJ uh, uh, choke ballon, the 3 to 1 bandwidth, which is as much as the ICOM could tune uh, using its internal antenna tuner, 7129, about uh, halfway uh, down uh, the uh, uh, band. So this is the start of the, um, well, it's a little bit above the start of the voice band. Uh, 2 to 1, 7, 1, 8, 2. The best is 1.0 to 1 at 7251, sort of in the general band. Uh, 2 to 1 at the upper end of the band, and 3 to 1 way up above the band at 737. 
the band ends at 7.3. I could slightly lengthen this antenna and move these numbers down. Now, when I put the ballon in, there's very little effect. The best frequency is changed by just a couple hertz and still 1.0 to 1. And you see here that the frequencies, um, the 3 to 1 extends a little further down, but on the top end, the 2 to 1 and 3 to 1 stay the same. Now, when I put the ballon at the antenna, the choke ballon at the antenna, it moves the frequency slightly. It moves them in um, on the 3 to 1. It moves, it slightly narrows the bandwidth, which would indicate to me that there is a little radiation from the coax, and that radiation is being thwarted by this here, so we get a little uh, bit uh, sharper, higher Q on the antenna. Uh, 719 is just a little bit above. Now this 7304 is just slightly below, so again there is a little bit of squeezing in the band, not very much. Hardly enough to bother with. Now uh, the best SWR is still 1.0 at 7248, so it barely changes the resonant frequency by about 3 hertz, which is measurement error, not, not worth wondering about. Now on the 20 meter band, what we're looking at here is um, the, the antenna is definitely a little bit long. Now if I adjust this band, this, the inner band, I, have to, I would end up having to readjust that. Um, but the one-to-one -one is the best without the ballon. It's 1.2 to 1 with the ballon. Again, that is a negligible difference. The um, frequency varies just slightly for uh, the best SWR. These numbers are down below the band. Note here there seems to be some m minor change uh, in the uh, low end at the 3 to 1 point, 12.925, and then 2 to 1 at 13.506. Now these are outside the band, no one cares. This is actually outside the band. But if you look at the 2 to 1, which would be about as much as you'd want to feed without a tuner, 14.6 um, is way up above the band. So you've got uh, under 2 to 1 SWR across the entire 20 meter band in any of these cases. And the high end here, you see it's interesting, it pulls in the high end to 15.269 from 15.615 and 15.503. So again, it is arresting some of the uh, radiation from the feed line. Now, remember the 17754 antenna is simply broken in the middle. One side is attached to the shield. The other side is attached to the, uh, the shield, and this is the center conductor here. And then there's a little trap and loading coil uh, on either side of this, okay? So there is no ballon in the antenna itself. Now, that is not true of the reference station antenna, which is the MFJ2010. That does have a ballon right at the, uh, uh, right at the feed point. So you don't have this kind of a problem to worry about. So the net of it is that the ballon makes a little bit of difference. It's clearly reacting with a little bit of RF that's on the uh, outside of the coax, on the shield, on the outside of the shield. And the ballon enables all the RF to stay inside. Now, although it is clear from the directions that come from MFJ that the ballon is supposed to be placed near the transmitter, I would suggest that you place it at the antenna. It's very nicely sealed. I don't think you'll have any problem with weather. Um, but 
that would help you most because if you put it at the uh, radio, that leads the entire length of coax feeding the line to radiate if any of that RF spills over onto the feed. If you put it up at the antenna, you won't have that problem. So that is what I recommend, putting it up at the antenna. Well, that was an interesting little excursion. I hadn't tried that uh, MFJ915. I've had it for a while, but have never tried it. Now I've tried it. I purchased it with channel funds, so this is not a freebie from MFJ. Um, I think in a situation where if you find RF in the shack, or you find the uh, SWR behaving strangely, or if you find that the rig seems to be sensitive to RF, for example, funny things happen when you transmit, then definitely you need something like this. Now, the way this ballon is constructed, uh, the ballon comes down here. Here's your coax, and then there's 50, count them, 50, of these little RF um, ferrite cores around this thing that are that the wire is looped through and it's actually um, it's, th there's extra coax in here because the piece of coax it talks about in the instructions is longer than the physical device but uh, this allows the RF that is coming down the outside of the coax will be dissipated as heat in the ballon, okay? That's what happens to it, it's dissipated as heat. Now, that means if you have a truly awful SWR, you've got a lot of return currents. If you've got a lot of current on the outside here, this could get warm. Um, but it is rated for full SSB power. In other words, about a 20 to 40 percent duty cycle on transmit and of course nothing on receive. It is not rated for continuous transmit such as a 10 minute long ready transmission that's a bulletin or something like that. Um, it's fine for CW but uh, remember that some modes are key down all the time. Now, if you're doing uh, digital modes, uh, you're not going to be using full power anyway. All of the digital modes are low power modes, and you shouldn't be using an amplifier with uh, any of those. So there you have it, uh, the inside scoop on that particular little product from MFJ. Again, if you're having trouble with weird RF getting into your setup or something like that. This product is only $40. Um, it can be mounted out at the antenna or wherever it is best for you. Now, in my grounding setup, any uh, RF on the current would be grounded out at the ground before it comes into the shack. And that seems to be the case. I don't have much of an RF problem in the shack. The only thing I have is with the computer speakers and they're real easy to turn off if I have that problem. Thank you for all your support. Uh, please go to uh, dcastler.com support to find various ways you can help fund this channel. And um, please leave a comment. I love the comments. Um, please uh, press the like button or if you absolutely can't stand this, press the dislike button. Um, and uh, until we next meet, 73.